Hello, hello, Alex aqui. Então, antes de começar esse episódio, eu quero dar algumas atualizações sobre o inglês de Necru. Em 2020, nós vamos ter 12 challenges diferentes, ou seja, é um novo produto completamente diferente para vocês. A cada mês, a gente vai ter um challenge diferente um do outro, claro. Então, por exemplo, nós teremos challenges sobre como melhorar o seu vocabulário, como fazer good first impressions, como ter o inglês melhor e mais natural possível durante conversas com nativos de inglês. Eu estou muito animada e quero muito, muito, muito que você participe. Então, se você gosta de nós, se você gosta do nosso trabalho, se você gosta aqui do Inglês no Micro Rádio e quer ficar de uma vez por todas sério com seu inglês, começando agora em 2020, vá lá no nosso site, inglesnicru.com. Now, on with the show! Oi pessoal, tô aqui para dar aquele recadinho diário e avisar que ainda dá tempo de aproveitar os 50% de desconto nos planos anuais do Cambly e do Cambly Kids. E gente, é aquela velha coisa, né? Daqui a um ano você vai ter desejado ter começado hoje. Então, vem pensar um pouquinho nisso, é um pouco, é um pouco filosófico, né? É um pouco nostálgico, mas ao mesmo tempo é aquele empurrãozinho que você precisa para se inscrever e aproveitar esse 50% de desconto. E lembrando que só os 100, não, os mil primeiros códigos <risos> que conseguirem colocar lá é que vão poder aproveitar. Então as mil primeiras pessoas de não códigos. Tá tudo errado. Cambly, perdão, mas estou fazendo aqui o meu melhor e eu acho que eu tô conseguindo passar para vocês o que é o mais importante, que é o 50% de desconto no Cambly e no Cambly Kids. E o nosso código é 50 no Icru para o adulto e 50 no Icru Kids para o Cambly Kids. Lembrando que o 50 é em numeral e Cambly se escreve C-A-M-B-L-Y. Então é isso, galera. Vambora, vamos aprender inglês, vamos, vamos esfor se esforçar, vamos dar, vamos dar aquela chance para falar, não é mesmo? Então vai lá e aproveita. Cambly.com, o aplicativo do Cambly. Now, on with the show. So, your grandfather, who would be my great grandfather, came from the Middle East. We don't know exactly where, either Lebanon or Syria. Yeah, he came from Lebanon. Okay. And then started in New York, eventually moved to South Carolina, bought a donkey, was selling stuff. And then he had a lot of different um, buildings, and your dad purchased one of those, which was a furniture store. Sorry to confuse you. So my grandfather opened a store, a true store, and sold everything from ties to shoes, to overalls to, to sheets. And uh, my father went to work for him. They didn't get along, so my father went out on his own and um, started what we call a wholesale business, where he sold um, dry goods, which are textile products, to other stores. Right. Wholesale would be like um, fire day issue. Yeah. 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 And so my dad decided to, uh, he had a little money to invest. He decided to build some buildings. And he built a little shopping center and rented uh, one of the spaces to a furniture store. And um, the furniture store, unbeknownst to him, wasn't doing as well as he thought it did. <laughs> and... They moved out in the middle of the night, and uh, he came to work one day, and it was locked up, and it was it was cleaned out, and they obviously owed him some rent, which is why they, they left in the middle of the night. A couple of weeks later, he had a knock on his door, and it was a carpet salesman who wondered where the furniture store went um, because he had done business with the furniture store. And my father says, well, they're gone, and the carpet salesman says, well, can you let me in so I can get my samples? And my father said, sure. So he let him in, and within an hour, the carpet salesman had put my father in the carpet business, and the rest is history. Um, and so um, I came back to work after, uh, after college, and uh, we've built and grown the business ever since. So all of this is almost a complete freak accident. You know, Foster, I mean, so much of life is, is true serendipity, which is, 
you know, just random acts that are seemingly unconnected that somehow point you down the path that you end up on. And, uh, you know, if my father would have, he could have said no. And who knows, I might have, you know, I might have been an accountant or a doctor or, you know, or who knows what. But um, since my father got in the flooring business and uh, he had done well with it and I had an affinity for it, um, things just work out. Yeah. So when did you start working for Hodge Carpets? Uh, truth be known, I started working when I was 14 years old. Truth be known. Yeah. Yeah. Southern. Truth Southern. be known, I started working when I was 14 years old. I started working after school when I was 14 because um, I wanted more money. And my dad, <laughs> paid, he paid me a dollar an hour, and I would work for a couple hours after school. And then I'd work during the summertime. And uh, um, and I got to learn the business from the ground up. Uh, I worked on the crews. I was on my hands and knees helping them install install flooring. And um, uh, when I got out of college, it was kind of understood that I'd come back to work for the family business. Yeah. So two things. First, when my, my dad says the crews, he's referring to the crew of people, like the team, and not actually a cruise ship. Secondly, do you have any idea how much a dollar would have been worth then? We have a phone call coming in. No worries. Um, would that have been like three dollars an hour, or like eight dollars? Oh no, it would probably worth eight, yeah, eight or ten dollars now. I would think. Yeah. yeah. So it wasn't that ridiculous. So I was making a dollar an hour. That was probably less than minimum wage. Minimum wage now is what eight or nine dollars, ten dollars an hour in South Carolina. In South Carolina, yeah, yeah. And I think it's also illegal for fourteen-year-olds to work. Yeah, but of course, back then a hamburger <laughs> cost nineteen cents too. <laughs> so dad something i've thought about a lot as alexia and i have started this business is kind of the idea that we have this entrepreneurial i don't know strike in our blood do you think that entrepreneurs are are born like are they just people just have it in them or are they kind of created through experiences God, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm a, I'm a firm believer in, in genetics. Uh, you know, that's something you, you make, <laughs> you can make a lot of cho- choices in your life, but you can't choose your ancestors. I mean, that, that's something you're stuck with. And, um, you just got to look at history. I mean, on both sides of, of my family and your family's foster, we were all self-sufficient. And, uh, you know, and I think if you see your, if you see your father and your grandfather and your aunts and uncles make it their own way, um, and make a living the way they want to make it, um, you say, you know, that's what I want to do too. Uh, you know, it, it's a, it certainly is a, is a feeling of accomplishment, but it's a certain amount of freedom and, um, and probably a certain amount of, of hard headedness that, you know, is, is genetic that mm-hmm. you, that you can't get over. Um, can you explain the term hard headedness? Well, that's probably a southern a southern term, but hard headed, hard headed. You know, we all know what hard headed means, and uh, <laughs> Alexia probably, probably done. But you there know, are two, you know, three hard, people in this room, and one of us definitely does not know what that yeah, means. I mean, you know, hard headed person, and you know, it's an endearing term. I don't, I don't use it uh, derogatory. Is that you know, someone who's who's headstrong and is set in their ways and somewhat stubborn. Um, but they're not easily swayed and uh, are confident in the decisions they're making. Yeah, I think stubborn is a relatively accurate. Yeah. Stubborn in, in the positive connotation of the word. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How do you feel about the fact that we come from this long line? Actually, before I go there, how many brothers and sisters do you have? I have six brothers and sisters. And how many would you consider entrepreneurs? All of them. Yeah, I really do. And I look at my aunts and I truly look at my aunts and uncles on both sides of the family and they were all entrepreneurs. My grandfather on my mother's side was a farmer. I mean, what that is the ultimate entrepreneur. I mean, you talk about a guy who makes a living out of planting stuff in the ground and digging it up and selling it. I mean, if that's not an entrepreneur, there is there is no such thing. We have doctors and lawyers and and teachers. I mean, teacher is an entrepreneur. You know, they work for themselves. They're selling their talent. Um, yeah, so I, I would think that almost a hundred percent of our immediate family were all entrepreneurs. Yeah. This is kind of a point where I get into, get into the weeds a little bit that, for example, your eldest son, my brother Camden, who has been on the show, 
is a lawyer, but you would consider him an entrepreneur? I would. I would, uh, especially the, the type of law he practices. His his um, The amount of money he makes is directly dependent on the, the amount of work that he produces. And, you know, I think that's uh, that's a, a key component in, in a in, in the entrepreneurial spirit is that, you know, you're you're duly rewarded for the for the, uh, the amount of work you put in. So how would you define just in a very loose sense entrepreneurship compared to what? Because it sounds like you're talking about anybody can be an entrepreneur, even if you're working within a company and let's say you're like a marketing analyst, but you're still a go getter. Is that person an entrepreneur? Well, I mean, it certainly is. I mean, it's a, it's a it's a buzzword in today's business world. I mean, yeah. entrepreneurship is, you know, that 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 is like the most glowing uh, adjective that you can give to a to a to a businessman. That's what our generation says when we don't have a job. Sure, <laughs> <But> sure <laughs> when I mean, we're even, podcasters, <laughs> even in the corporate world, I think they 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 try to breed a, a sense of entrepreneurship, and that's just that's people that are they're taking risk and and thinking new ideas and think of new ways to make money. Um, you know, on, on our little level, uh, you know, an entrepreneur truly controls his destiny. You know, he doesn't have a boss. He doesn't. You know, he doesn't have to ask for permission to do things. Um, he risks his own time and his own capital uh, to pursue his um, his ideas and his dreams and he has nobody else to blame uh, so you know that's that's different than working nine to five for FedEx I mean you know it, it is it, it's getting a paycheck every two weeks yeah it, whether you show up or not whether you produce or not I don't get a paycheck unless I produce you know and uh, I have nobody to blame myself and I wouldn't have it any other way yeah I think that was beautifully put. So something that I know has been very integral to our business for years and years and years, the slogan of my dad's business, like the motto, the logo was when your name is on the store, you care a lot more because Hodge Carpets, now Hodge Floors, literally has our namesake in the business. And I think Alexi and I have a little bit of that just because we are so public facing people hear us talk every day and there's this idea of like hey you know us and that really holds us accountable like it holds us to a level of customer service that wasn't a question but do you want to follow up with that well i think you you, you hit the nail on the head um another, <laughs> another southern colloquialism oh, yeah southern uh, just the way you said it but yeah. um you know, our slogan, when your name's on the store, you care a lot more. I mean, I mean, what that does, it sums up that um, if you got a problem, you can call me. Um, you know I'm going to answer the phone. Uh, we live in a small town where you know our names. You know who we are. Uh, we live in the community. You go to church with us. Um, and we're going to take care of you. We, we have to because if we don't, you're going to tell your friends and neighbors and our business is sunk. The same way with yours, Foster. I mean, you you know, you're building a business mainly by word of mouth. Yeah, you can do all the advertising you want, but you you're gonna you're you're trying to create raving fans that are gonna talk about you, and that, and that's all we've been doing for the last forty five years is creating this ba- <laughs> this base of customers that that will tell their friends and neighbors and their children. Uh, about the only place to buy floor covering from. And, uh, you know, it takes a while to build a brand, but when you're invested and you're invested as an entrepreneur, you got to take it personally. You have to. If you if if you disengage yourself from it, you know, you just, you're just another corporate goon. I mean, it's, you know, we're, <laughs> you know, this is, this is, this is our life. I mean, it's, you wear it like a second skin. I mean, you really do. And, uh, um, yeah, I, I, I can't imagine going through life and, you know, everybody has a way. Everybody figures out a way to make a living. I mean, you have to, or you die. Yeah. Uh, you go make. You're gonna make a dollar somehow. But um, you know, the entrepreneurs do it uh, and get a sense of satisfaction. I don't think anybody who works nine to five ever feels. Yeah, yeah. Can you explain what a corporate goon would be? <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the world is. You know, I don't know the, the statistic, but. Uh, Small business in, in the United States accounts for, I want to say, it's r- over 50% of the, of the jobs. Yeah, I think it's like 62%. Uh, yeah, uh, so, 
you know, we get overlooked because, you know, in my small company, we, we employ about 25 people. Um, but you take all the Hodge floors in Spartanburg County and all of a sudden 25 times, you know, a thousand, that's 25,000 people that are employed by small, small companies. Uh, it takes one BMW that employs five, 4,000, 5,000 people. Um, you know, I'm not saying those people are bad people, but, um, it's different. I mean, they, they, they work for a, a billion dollar company, uh, you know, and, uh, it's a different corporate culture, and um, I, I don't. I didn't mean corporate goon is a, in a derogatory um, manner. In a derogatory way. In a derogatory way. Derogatory. <laughs> um, but um, no, I know exactly what you mean. Just the idea of having a greater degree of connection of what the actual business does compared to I don't know if someone works at Goldman Sachs. They probably don't actually care like what's happening at the top of Goldman Sachs. At Hodge Carpets, your livelihood is quite literally on the line. Yeah, every day. And the and the folks that work for me depend on me to to point them in the right direction. Hey guys. I think that is a good place to end it for today. I hope you could understand most of what my father is trying to say. He will be back tomorrow. Muito obrigada por ter escutado mais um episódio aqui do nosso Inglês de Necro Rádio. Como sempre, vou pedir para você deixar sua review, deixar o seu e-mail no nosso site inglesdenecro.com, ficar de olho nas novidades que a gente sempre manda, nossos recursos grátis, enfim, todas as novidades que a gente puder, a gente vai estar compartilhando com vocês, principalmente por e-mail. Então, é isso. Eu quis aqui dar esse recado. Como sempre, obrigada pelo suporte e a gente se vê no próximo episódio, tá bom? Bye!